Well, I'm just trying to see whether we're live or not. Can't find the post. I am live, there we go. Hi Sandra. Right, let's move this over a bit so it's all in shot. No, that way. Never know my right from my left. That's better. So morning everybody. So this is it's been quite a while since I've been live on um this group. So apologies for that. Um been a bit busy moving and stuff. Um not enough hours in the day, obviously. So uh today um I thought we'd just use some stuff that's on my desk um and some stuff that wasn't. So there is a plan. Um so first of all, what we're going to do is, um, let's see, let's see how many people are jumping on. Um, I thought we'd do a tag um, because I like them as bookmarks. This is actually a Studio Light tag um, die set, which I don't think you can get anymore. Well, unless you can find it on a site somewhere. But... They're my go-tos. They're from a couple of years ago when I used to do Studio Light on the TV. This one's the Urban Tags, and there are actually four different shapes, as you can see. Um, the Urban and the Oriental are my favourite, these two. And then there's also um, a, a flat top tag as well. Let's see if I'm in shot. Yeah, flat tag uh, uh, tagging as well. And they are all... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six sizes, and then you get the um, <clears throat> the re reinforcers. So the the smallest one goes for the bottom three sizes, and the largest one goes to the top. You can see I've got extra reinforcers in there because I pulled them from some of my other sets. Um, and you've got a mat and a layer, which I this is what I really like about the tags that you've got uh, your mat and your layer. And my daughter does quite a lot on book talk, and. Um, She's got quite a lot of my bookmarks that I've made and uh, she likes them because they're two layers so they're thicker than normal tags and she really likes those. So we're going to decorate one of these but what I thought we'd do first of all is um, because not everybody knows how to do it and you may or may not have visited my YouTube channel uh, which is just Julia Watts Crafts on YouTube where there is a video how to do the background and I have done it on here before but I thought we'd just revisit this background just in case you don't know how to do it and it is actually inspired by and I don't know where my book is because I can't find half my stuff since I moved um it's inspired by um Diane Reevely's um, uh, um one of her books that she did uh, and she did it obviously with her Dilutions inks. So we're going to start with a couple of pieces of watercolour card. Let's get them. And I tend to go for an A4 sheet, and then actually across the sizes, I can get four or five tags out of each A4 sheet. And this is Sentimentally Yours Hot Press watercolour card, which is nice and smooth, easy to stamp on. So this is a Distress Oxide background, but it's not um, spraying, so it's not messy, um, which is, so you've not got to kind of, I don't know, cover up all the, your surrounding area of your desk, which is really nice, because um, we're just going to use the tubes. And it, it really doesn't matter what colours you choose, because most of them work together. You do have to bear in mind that, say, if you mixed a yellow and a purple, you might get brown um so just be careful you might get mud but these these will work so we've got mermaid lagoon wilted violet and pit raspberry i don't think they're what we've used on here i can't remember i never write them down because they all work so what you want to do is first of all you want to agitate 
your oxide just to get that ball bearing going so I'm just rocking it side to side I'm not shaking it up and down because I don't want the chalk to go up the tube because at some point I might decide that I do actually want to spray them as opposed to um, drawing with them so just giving them a bit of a agitation And the other thing you'll need is you'll need um, some uh, a water mister. This is one of the sentimental to yours water misters. So we're going to just hit this with loads and loads of water. And because it's a hot press watercolour card, it can cope with the volume of water that we're going to hit this with. And don't worry if it doesn't turn out very well. Once it's dry, you can go again with another combination of colours or more of the same colour. So we're going to start with the lightest colour, which is your pick raspberry. And we're just going to draw some swirly whirlies with it. And you can see that where there's lots of water, that ink is dispersing. You will see uh, when, you, when you get your piece is dry, and I will show you the tag again, that you do get kind of lines from where you've drawn on your background, which is really cool. And you can also see as you're going on here, where the ink's not drawing out so much that's where your card isn't very wet so that's our pit raspberry let's have a little bit more over here and it doesn't matter if you get any splodges it's absolutely fine let's move that back over then we go for the next lightest color which i believe is i don't know why these comments aren't um Okay, so next lightest colour we're going to go for Wilted Violet. But before we go with Wilted Violet, we're going to give this another spray, actually concentrating where the, um, where the ink isn't moving around. Put a bit more water there. Let's have a bit more here. Because the, the, the card is so absorbent that it does, try, it does um, kind of absorb the water quite quickly. So this is your Wilted Violet. Don't worry about any contamination. It, it really is very insignificant when you pop the tube back in. It's a bit of a mess at the moment, don't worry. It will be fine. And then finally, we're going to go with Mermaid Lagoon. Obviously, pink and blue make purple anyway. So you might, this might turn out very purple. You don't actually know what you're getting until you've done the final step. I should have given it another miss. Let's give it another miss. If you don't want much blue, then don't go on with much blue. That'll do, I think. We don't really want much white showing, but it will all be fine. So final mist. Then you take a second piece and pop it on top. And then you want a rag or some um, kitchen roll or something. And this is quite cool because as the ink comes out from the outside, uh, from underneath, you can actually use your rag, depending on how bright it is, to actually colour the other side. So if you're doing say a journal page and you're using journal dies so you're not actually sticking them onto a piece of card within the journal so say if you're using the studio like uh, journal dies or the um, Elizabeth Craft design dies then this can actually colour the other side this is actually very light which does not bode well for how light the background is but you know like I say if you're not happy with it then you can always go again but also, sometimes when you're stamping, you don't want a really, really dark background. You don't want it necessarily as dark as the one that I'm going to be using. Then we can just peel these apart. Oh, that's nice. Pick it up. It's stuck. And you do get a bit of pooling at the bottom where you've actually pulled it apart. But we've actually got... See, we've got two backgrounds. We've got that one, and then we've got your other one that's gone on top. 
Can you see two of them? So they're going to just go down on the mat to dry. A couple of hours at most. I would actually leave them to dry naturally. I wouldn't actually um, force the drying. Now, obviously, this ink that's left on here, you could dip. I'm not going to today. But then you've got the makings and the startings of another background going on. So that's how you make the background for the tag that we're going to be using. Like I say, I can't remember the colours that I used, but most of them work anyway. I'm just going to switch over to my laptop rather than my iPad because I don't think my iPad is showing me any comments. So if you're making comments, I can't see them. It's under happening now. Okay. That's better. I can see some more comments now. <laughs> Let's just click on that. Okay. Right, so let's get back to my tag. Okie cokey. Now, unfortunately, I don't get a lot of my tags back. Uh, when well, I don't get any tags back when uh, we do um, the, sh the stuff at Creative Craft, which is very annoying as I'm doing some workshops and now I've got to actually remake everything. Um, so we're going to be using some fairy hug stamps and uh, let's just add a little bit of interest to our background. There is a plan, so let's show you what the plan is and then I can decide what, where I want to ink. So, da, 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 da. what we've got is, because, it, because we're doing the tag, I'm thinking books. So, we're going to do books. I don't always do books with tags. This is the Book Tree Library. So, the Book Tree Library's got lots and lots of books on it. Obviously, mine's a little bit dirty. And that's going to go up the hill. Then, there's a number of things that we can do, actually. On my original one, which my daughter's got... And I can't show you a picture because I can't use switcher on, on the group, unfortunately. Um, so this is Teague. And Teague's one of the dragons and he's got a pile of books. So he was heading up the hill to the library to put the books back. But what we can also do is... Let's put Teague back in the proper place. Because you can mix and match across the, co the collections absolutely beautifully. We can also use Willow. Now, Willow is from the gardening collection, which is the new one. And she's got her hands out. So she could be um, holding a watering can, like, uh, you know, uh, or a trowel or a fork or something, one of the gardening tools. But she can also be holding a book. And we have a reading toad set. And there's a book that faces in the right direction. So we can put that book into Willow's hands and she can be heading up to the... Um, book tree library so that's what we could do or if we didn't want to make, do it complicated we could add Aubrey who's already ha holding a book and she's got like book pages as, as her um... oh what's happened hang on a second oh I'm still oh it said it was finished sorry nightmare um <clears throat> yes so yes so she's already she's got book pages as her skirt so she could be heading up to the um the tree as well um we can also use the piles of book that books that teague's got down here and we can have some of the little tiny reading dwellers these are tiny tiny fairies we can have some of them sitting on top 
So, yeah, lots and lots of um, possibilities here. So I'll probably go off at tangents and change my mind. But let's have a little bit of the background going on. And I'm thinking... I like the magical dots. That's one of my favourites. This one plays havoc with your mind. It's very retro. Um, or there's the water stains. Let's go for this one. So I've not used that one for a while. This one's called Orbs. Or Fairy Orbs. And we're going to have... Let's have a little bit of this in Wilted Violet first. And I'm going for um, Distress Ink rather than distress oxide which is what's in the background but this is all oxidized this is nice and nice for you to stamp on and can you see there's lines let's see let's see if the camera's catching up with me there's lines all over the tag oh, what's going on with this it's not showing me the live feed very well oh, there we go yes yeah, so you can see there's lines all over the tag and that's from the tubes where we were uh, actually drawing with it. Okay, so let's have some bit of orb. So we only we don't want it too dark because we don't want it to be dominant. Just up there. Might have it a bit darker than that. There we go. So we've got a little bit of that going on there it's a really cool stencil and we'll have a little bit going on down here maybe i'm gonna i need to ground um things as well okay so we've got a little bit at the bottom as well okay right so that's my stenciling that's all i'm going to do with that Then because we want the tree on a hill, come back with the tree. I think we will go for Aubrey just because it's easier and she's already there made for us. So she's gonna be coming in down here. So the tree's gonna be up there. So we need some cutty out bits. So just a piece of card that's been torn and we're going for Mermaid Lagoon so we're going for the colours two of the colours that we used when we created the um, background with the pink in it um, and I think this has got Wilted Violet and Mermaid Lagoon and another blue perhaps so we're just going to add some Mermaid Lagoon there like that. A bit darker so we can actually see it. Okay, that's good. And then we're going to have a bit more of a hillock here. going on there and we'll have a final little bit with a different piece of card and another tiny bit perhaps like that. sometimes you find that the the color comes off what you've used before which is a little bit irritating there we go so now we've got some hills going on so we've got something to ground our characters and you can see um, I've left a gap so you can still see the colour underneath and it does give you an, an idea of um, kind of perspective, I think. Let's just clean that up. Okay, and then we're ready to start stamping. Now, it is, it is watercolour card, and as I said, it's very absorbent. So, if you're using things like the Fairy Hugs papers, they are a little bit, well, they are easier to stamp on because they don't 
they don't suck the um, moisture from the ink. Having said that, when you colour in with them, um, the colour doesn't move, but it does move on watercolour cards. So it's like <sighs> getting your head around it is quite difficult. So obviously I can't butt this up to the corner, but I'm using the press to impress um, lines. And I'm down on number 20 down here and I'm on number two. So I'm hoping it, it, it doesn't move, but we'll see. It's always a challenge, isn't it? Right, enough magnets. It is really cool stencil, isn't it, Caroline? I love that. I love that stencil. It does, it does draw you in, doesn't it? It's really, really cool. So this is our book tree library and it's going on the hill. There is also the book of knowledge, which uh, the tree of knowledge, which works really well. So we're going to have it going off the page, which is absolutely fine. Let's have another magnet and another one. Why not? <laughs> Enough magnets. And I think instead of stamping in black, let's stamp in stamping medieval blue which is a dark blue but not as dark as twilight and we're using verse fine clear this verse fine clear is nice and juicy there are inkers available in all the colors so um you don't need to buy new ink pads now which is brilliant give it a really good inking i've not used this stamp for a little while so trying to give myself the best chance of getting a decent image first time but I'm I know I'm going to have to stamp here a second because of the card so give this a chance to settle in to the card It's very detailed as well, so you really need to give it a chance. Like I say, if you're using the Fairy Hugs papers, because they're kind of semi-coated, it is a little bit easier. That's pretty good for a first impression, actually. The detail's incredible, absolutely incredible. So um, I think actually we're going to just go with that, because that's that's really good actually I don't know why I'm so surprised <laughs> I give that a bit of a wipe which is about as much cleaning as I do it's just so that I don't get quite so dirty when I take it off and I store my stamps back in their original sleeve and where's it gone from this side julia there we go tree library and i write down at the top what it is and the number and then i store them all in um number order and um so i can just flick through and then i've got i've got box i've got a box with this size stamp a box with this this size stamp and then a box with this size stamp um it's just easier to find them so let's use Aubrey next. Hi Kim. Right, so Aubrey's coming in. She's at the bottom of the hill. She's walking along. And and we we you know, will she finish her book before she gets to the to the book tree library? Who knows? So she's coming here. We can also add some things to the bottom of the tree and on the top of the tree as well, which is quite cool. And let's stick with that blue. Let's stick with medieval blue because it's nice. It's nice sometimes not to stamp on black, although we are going on um, a black background because I tend to cut loads and loads of tags out and I always map them onto black. It'll be fine. Clean up the mess. 
and then we'll take Aubrey into the seam. Yeah, she needs to look where she's going, doesn't she? <laughs> I think it's if you're reading a good book. Mind you, I think I'd probably sit down rather than just walk and read. <laughs> sit down leaning against the tree. I'm going to just go with Aubrey once more. She's very good, but I'm just going to make her a bit darker. I hope she didn't move at all. That's always the danger. There she is. Look at those, those pages of, of her skirt. It's, she's a really good image. <clears throat> okay, so that's Aubrey. I do find this sort of um, thing, this sort of stamping really relaxing, personally, because uh, you just lose yourself in the story. Oh, there's a thing there. Right, so we can have, we could have, let's have some piles of books actually from Teague set because really Aubrey should be helping restock the library but she's she's found a book that she's quite interested in and she's reading it instead of getting on with her work because that's her this is a Saturday job you see now let's have a pile of books just in the corner there Let's move over actually to let's use Fantasia, which is a dark purple, which obviously just fits in with our colour scheme. And then we want to have some more books. So we're going to use the acetate that comes with it. Oh, that noise was my, was my cat, if you heard that. He's just let out a very, very loud snore. <laughs> so we're going to have a, a slightly less high pile here. Remember to take the acetate off and pick up the right colour ink. And so we're going to do all the books in Fantasia. <laughs> Ed can't hear you because he's, he's asleep. never known a cat snore as loudly as he does right so let's have another pile but this time what we're going to do is we're going to turn the books over so they're the other way up so we're going to have the pile going the other way like that because you can obviously they're designed to sit in Teague's hands because he's meant to be carrying them not supposed to do fours you're supposed to do odd numbers I think I'm gonna have just, just another little stack down here just a tiny stack I'm gonna have it that way okay. don't be frightened about stamping off the page 
or off the tag. There we go. So there's our pile of books, all waiting to re be restocked in the uh, book tree library. Put this back with Teague. I only have one Teague left in stock um, and they're actually sold out at the moment so I can't get any more. Just at the minute, I'm, I'm sure that they'll be back. I'll find out later when I can get some more. Okay, so that's Teague, Teague's books, or Teague. And we can also have, let's see, we could also have a reading toad just sat at the base of the tree. It can be that way or that way. Um, I don't think I want him that way. I think we'll have a smaller one. Or we can pull in our little fairies instead and have a little fairy sitting at the bottom there. Let's have a frog. I like the frogs. So he's going to be sat just at the bottom of the... We'll do his book in a minute. All the books are separate because he could be holding something else. He could be holding a cup of tea from the, the tea set. So look at the fairies. So let's have a look. But the fairies can go on top of the tree. Oh, magnets. I don't know. She can. She sat down. Oh, she can go here actually. facing the other way so they're, they're, I reckon they're, they're rehearsing a play together and this one's lying at the bottom this one's over there and we can also have one sitting on the top up there it would be rude not to use this one, wouldn't it? Let's have her sitting down there. Like so, so we've used all six fairies. Don't often do that. And we've got a frog. Because why not? <laughs> why wouldn't we have a frog? That's quite a lot of stamps on there. Let's put another magnet there. Yep. You don't want to stick, do you, madam? Right, what colour to use? That's the thing. Don't want to use the purple. I don't want to use the blue. I actually want them darker. So I think we might go for Twilight. Twilight. Which is a very, very dark blue. It's almost black. And I'm going to do the frog in the same colour, just because it's easier. And I think if I did him in green, then it would really kind of um, jump out. And I don't want him to jump out. I don't want a jumping frog at all. This is the beauty of the stamping platform. And not only if you don't stamp it very well, but you've got you can do so many stamps at once. Squeaking. Let's see how we go. Might need to do them again. They're pretty good actually. Don't think we need to do. Oh, that's, that one's a bit dodgy. Let's give them a little bit more. Yes, yeah, so definitely rehearsing something. It won't be a scary thing that they're, they're um, rehearsing. It'll be a nice, gentle thing. 
So we've got all our fairies there now. It's very busy around there. Maybe they've got a. Maybe they're selling off some of their books at the at the uh, book tree library, and and there's a big scramble for them. Although I don't think they're going to be selling anything if the fairies are sitting on top of the ones that need to be replenished. <laughs> right. Let's put these back in the right place. Otherwise, we're going to have something really weird going on. Oh, she's that one. Is that one that's the one that stood up reading the frog doesn't belong there the frog's got to have a book though and i'll give him a book that's the line down fairy and that's that one so there's quite a few different um dweller sets um in the fairy hogs catalogue where's my other bit gone can't feel it i'll put that away in a minute yeah there's quite a few dwellers there's um Condo dwellers one and two, there's ballet, ballerina dwellers, there's witchy dwellers, there's reading dwellers, there's lots of different dwellers. So which way was he going? He was going that way, so his little book has got to go in his hand like that. So you could also be, um, aside from reading, it's very difficult to get this out of my fingers. Aside from reading, he could also be um, kind of expelling some fairy dust. Um, as well, even though he's a frog, so it'd be frog dust. Is that in your hands now, mate? I think it is. Get off me! It's not now. Right. Where's my pokey tool? Talk amongst yourselves. I want it in the right place. That's the problem. That will do. Right. So we're going to do that in the twilight as well. Tiny little stamp. And there's his little book in his hand. Shall you lift it up? That's his little book. So I don't think we need to add too much more to this. I will add a little because, you know, we're just going for it. Put my reading frogs. We've got reading uh, hedgehogs as well, which are really quite sweet. So let's have a sentiment. And we've got two sentiments that are really, really book related. We've got um, relax, which is you can find magic wherever you look, sit back and relax. All you need is a book. And then we've got between pages. Between the pages of a book is a lovely place to be. Now, I think between pages is too big, so we're not using that one. So let's see if we can use relax. I'm hoping we can. Nine times out of ten, I don't really leave enough space for sentiment. Obviously, on a tag, you don't have to have a sentiment. But when you've got ones that are actually appropriate for book reading, it's um, quite nice to be able to include it. So I think we'll do this one in... Yeah, we do this in twilight as well, so that there's something else in twilight. It, Twilight's more of a, although it's very, very dark, it's more of um, a tealy dark blue, uh, whereas um, the medieval blue is a blue blue. I just wanted to distinguish different, you know, pull them out differently, which is why I've done gone for the different blue. Might not work, but. Hey ho. You got an earworm, have you Lou? There we go, this is our sentiment. Working quite nicely. So 
So the only other thing I might want to put on here is perhaps a moon. So we'll see if that's going to work or not. This is a well-loved stamp. Both of the, the book sentiments are well-loved. And they're from October 21, actually. Quite old. So these are even older. These are uh, full moons, which is stamp number 53. And we're, at, we're over 600 now. So I'm thinking we might be able to bring in a full moon up here. So let's move this down a wee bit. We've also got spooky moons as well, where there's a, a solid and a spooky moon in two different sizes. But these are these were the original moons. So I think we can have one coming in over there, and then when I colour it in, we can give it a bit of a, a glow. I'm not going to colour in do any colouring in today. I'm just going to stamp because um, then you get some ideas of how easy it is to create the steams. Bread did a song about Aubrey, did they? I don't know that one. Let's go Twilight again. So we've got a good mix of stamping in Twilight and um, Medieval Blue. And then, of course, we've got the, the books in Fantasia. Obviously, you don't have to colour in the images if you don't want to. I, I'm i always quite torn because I think they look wonderful uncoloured. But then if you do colour them, that little pop of colour does actually make a difference. Although, you know, sometimes I think, oh, I can't be bothered. Um, sometimes It is actually very relaxing colouring them, colouring them in. It's just the process of thinking about doing it sometimes is a bit of a chore. So that's our full moons so if we were just taking this out of here for a minute oh bashing the camera as always <clears throat> so what i would do is i'd add i would add some color to it probably still sticking with the um blue and purple theme when i color them in and i would also add some uh, ink around the edges a bit of oxide around the edges um, and that is a large tag. Um, yes, Sandra, all these stamps are in stock on my website, julianwantscrafts.co.uk. Um, yeah, so um, they're great for the um, the, um, you know, the big hardbacks, this, this sort of size, if you're making a bookmark for somebody. Don't forget also, if you've got, uh, if you do have the dies, you can actually make yourself a tag shaped card as well by uh, with the largest die hanging the cutting edge over the fold so it doesn't cut on the fold and then you've got your tag shape and then you put one of these fronts on the front of it to make a complete tag if that makes sense um but anyhow there's your uh tag then i thought we'd just stamp uh, a couple of very very simple scenes using some of the papers that uh, fairy hogs do oh there's a thing for my fairies So let's go for this one first. <clears throat> so this is a paper from Tumbleshine. Uh, Tumbleshine uh, paper pad. Now all the paper pads from Fairy Hugs are all six by six. They're all um, double sided and you get 24 designs and there's 12 um, sheets. So, so those, for example, you've got front, back, front, back, front, back. 12 and then front back front back front back 12 so so that's how they do it so you get two sheets of each and it's 216 gsm which is a really really good weight it is actually card quality weight but they're kind of i say they're kind of semi-coated they do um the, the ink does take longer to dry on here than they would do on watercolor card 
um, but it does if you're wanting to color in you can't blend so if you want to get a, like a watercolor effect then you need to do it do your, your blending and your watering down on, on a, a block or a, in, a, in a palette before you actually apply the ink to it thank you Lou um, so uh, tumble shine lots and lots of um, moons and um, other circular type um, pieces to work on and there's two sizes you get a smaller moon but then a smaller piece and then you get the ones that kind of fill the page as well and some of them have got a texture to them they are they're a joy to work with this is my second tumble shine pad as i've used every single one of another one um, i've also got through quite a lot of some of my other pads as well there's quite a few fairy hugs um paper pads and I, I do have them uh, as well on my website. So this is this is one of the, the ones. And this is so, super, 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 super simple. Really easy. But just shows you it's not scary to actually create a scene um, using one of the papers and some of the stamps. And, and, you know, if you need a quick card, you know, you, you're good to go. This I've left this as six by six. I haven't actually trimmed this down. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. So obviously you can put this on a 7x7 seven seven card or just use this as, as a front on a 6x6 six six if you want to. So this is Magnolia Branch and this is actually from, it actually came out when the book collection came out uh, in February as well. So we're going to use it, obviously you can use it as foliage, so it could be around the top, but we're going to use it as a tree. So where we've got all the lines on the papers here. I'm going to pick a, pick a line to say that's where the tree's growing. So the tree's growing there like that. And we are going to go on to Nocturne, so we are going to use the black. Let's try and put my purples away. Blue, purple, black. There we go. So we're just going to pick this up onto our platform, make sure it's nice and... This is really nice to add a bit of colour. I mean, magnolias are one of my absolute favourite flowers. And here in the south of England, they have been absolutely... There's some magnificent, um, huge magnolias around here. They've been absolutely wonderful. Very jealous, because I don't have one yet. OK, so this is going here. Again, give that ink a bit of time to settle in obviously where you want to concentrate your pressure is where you've got the more solid lines um, but you know this should fingers crossed not need a second stamp because it's not a silhouette stamp anyway oh God, it always makes a liar out of you doesn't it yeah i do need a second stamp i haven't actually stamped this for a, a, a while there are so many stamps that um, it's hard to keep revisiting some of the older ones, although this is only from February. Give that press there. There we go. Perfect. Beautiful, beautiful stamp. Okay, so there's our tree, our magnolia branch. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do, and I did do a similar one with the hollow mint. Um, the hollow mint um, is, let me show you the hollow mint. I did do a similar card with the hollow mint. That's the hollow mint. Um, but obviously, just, just as a point of difference, I just thought I'd use the magnolia branch this time. So you can use either of them as a tree. And again, that's great foliage as well. And that's from the garden release. So it's new, 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 newish. So we're going to use one of the garden gnomes. Of course we are. So the garden gnomes, five garden gnomes in the set. You've got um, a, a spade, a couple of baskets, and you've got some carrots. 
Um, this one's lying down on the job. There's one of them that looks particularly grumpy, which is this one. And then we've got this one that's got the watering can. So this one here is going to be watering the magnolia. So he's going to come along and he's going to be watering the magnolia. Like so. And while we're at it, we might as well stamp a sentiment as well. This is all we're doing on this. This one is called Underneath the Moon. I love you in the morning and in the afternoon. I love you in the evening and underneath the moon. See, we've got the moon there and this chap loves this magnolia. So, that's why we're having that sentiment. So, we're going to have it just hanging off. Let's just make sure it's straight. Just hanging off of there like that. And again, just do them in black. And again, I would add a little bit of colour to. Oh, dirty mark. That'd be trimmed. <laughs> it's come off my fingers. Oh, I drive myself nuts. But don't worry. There's two sides to the piece of card. If you can't live with it, then you just turn it over and stamp on the other side. And every design is usable in this kit. And, and I would also mat and layer this onto black card. I might even cut it out um, with one of my uh, sentiment of yours. Deboss double stitch squares, which is quite nice. And I also like the um, Sue Wilson looped squares as well. They're two of my favorite square dies at the moment. There he is. See, he's a silhouette and he has actually stamped beautifully. Don't look at the dirty mark. <laughs> That's going to drive me nuts. I hate dirty marks. Considering what a dirty crafter I am, I hate dirty marks. It's normally when you're pulling the, the stamp up. Okay, so there's our gnomes, our garden gnomes, and the underneath the moon. And that, like I say, I would just add a little bit of colour to it. Um, and um, I don't know, obviously I, I need to get rid of that dirty mark, so I'd probably um, either die cut it or trim it. A bit smaller, mat it onto black card, and that would be it. So I'll just pull that out of there to show you. And I will grab a piece of black card. I haven't got a piece trimmed to size yet, but I will grab a bit. Just to show you that once you pop it onto black card, that's all you need. And it really pops. Not complicated, really easy. So that's that one. I've got one more and then we're gonna finish. That didn't take long, did it? Easy peasy. Again, using this tumble shine pad, because I really, really like this. And we're gonna again mix up different stamps from different releases because they all work together. So I've picked out this one. So this is uh, one of the more splodgy backgrounds, if you like. And it has, it's actually come out like that, but I'm gonna have it like that, I think. Or am I gonna have it like that? Let's have it like that. Doesn't really matter, because they're equi the, the, the circle is equidistant. And this is a smaller one than the one we had before. So on this one, what we're going to do is bring in the, Veggie Toadstool, which is from the Garden Release. And we are going to stamp the toadstool itself just on the edge of the circle like that. Not worried about grounding it, don't need to do that. What am I doing with that? 
and I think we'll go for brown. So we go for pine cone. Am I moving over? I move over gradually. The stamps are photopolymer, um, made in the US, and they are very, very good quality. I'm still using the ones I originally had from them nearly three years ago. Um, so like most things, just, just store them out of sunlight. So you don't want to do that. And um, let's give this a good old press here. So this is, like I say, this is pine cone versus fine clay. Need to go again. We'll see because of the um, the stalk. This one works really well if you use. Um, there's a stamp set called. Find it. So I've got them in order. Some of them aren't in order because I've been pulling stamps from everywhere. There's this stamp set here called Storyteller, and these little lights were really well hanging off of the veggie toadstool, um, as well as using the um, actual vegetables that come with it as well. That's really cool. In a second, so I'm going to stamp it again, and we'll see we're nice and butted up into the corner. I might need to reink this, I'll get some reinker out in a minute. If you are struggling, then it could be that you need to reink. Sorry about all the creaking. It's not a lot I can do about it. <laughs> right, so let's get some veggies. And we've also got a little birdie actually that comes with this, so we might use we might use the birdie. So we're gonna add I think that's a tomato. I think, I don't know, it could be a, it, the thing is it could be anything. I need to make sure I'm not gonna have a gap. I am there. Bit to overlap it and to have a gap. Of course, if you're using brown ink, you can't, there is a Pigma Micron pen that you can get, <coughs> excuse me, um, that's dark brown, so you can always draw it in. Obviously, if you're stamping in black, that's easy enough to get a black pen. Let's have one of these. Up here. Try and get them straight, otherwise they look like they're blowing in the wind. And we'll have this one here. So there is actually five vegetables that you get. There's also um, a stamp set called Veggie Lime, which has um, like um, tied together vegetables hanging with a little um, a peg, which you could also use on here if you wanted to. Let's just do the veggies first. And we are just going to do them as a silhouette in um, the pine cone as well. Make sure that's up to the edge. Obviously, if you wanted to, you could do them in uh, different colour inks to represent the vegetables they are. Or um, you could uh, perhaps stamp them in um, the morning mist, which is the grey, uh, which is a lot easier to add your uh, colour on top of. They're only getting four a day here, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, but the fifth vegetable is definitely five a day. 
let's have that a little bit darker so that it matches the actual toadstool itself. we can let's add the little birdie on the top because it would be rude not to and the bird is just such a useful little stamp put these back there's also you also get a vine on this here as well which could obviously can hang from the veggie toad store if you want it to but um, it can be foliage either up or downwards um, as well so it's a really really useful set this one so we're going to have the birdie there. What we're also going to do is bring in uh, this. Now, this is one of the Flower Fairy sets. Um, I'm slowly working my way through all the Flower Fairy sets. There's 22, and I'm doing three new projects. Uh, sometimes I do videos, sometimes I don't. Depends on whether I'm listening to music or not, really. Um, but um, I'm going to use just Zara herself. Each of the Flower Fairies uh, has um, her clo the clothing that they wear. Uh, represents or um oh what does it do it mirrors what the um flower is that it, she's actually with so she's obviously got a daisy skirt on her but she's going to be reaching up to pick a vegetable we've got the little um uh petal that's coming off there which which um figures on this one so i've not stamped sarah for ages she's my next fairy to work through so she's going to come up in here and she's going to be going to pick a vegetable. See, she works. Absolutely works. I love the fact that you can really mix and match across the fairy hugs, um, different collections. I'm just going to stick with the pine cone as, as, as I have been. I'm not going to do you any different inks with this one at all. And I probably would mat and layer this on some of the Chocolate Bliss card from Sentimentally Yours because that's a nice deep um, brown. Because we've also, we've also got browns in here, you see, in the background. Come on, Zara, let's give you a good old inking. I can see I need to ink her again on her legs. lift off so the bird is fine he looks good I am going to give him a little bit more ink now because he's still there Zara's so legs are a little bit pale I'll give a bit more on the hands that's better Occasionally when you get a brand new stamp uh, and it's a cra the same across all the manufacturers uh, Sometimes you the first stamping isn't very good and it sometimes it's sometimes the ink pools even with the versifying clear And that's just because there's a little bit of manufacturing residue uh, on the stamp So you can just clean your stamp and then next time it's absolutely fine There's nothing to worry about. You haven't got a faulty stamp. It's just some of the residue She is. so she's fine now and he's lovely and dark so she's re reaching up to pick her vegetables i don't know if the gnomes are going to be very happy because the gnomes have taken control of of the veggie toadstool uh, veggies so um yeah i think the gnomes are going to be a bit annoyed with her so let's put the birdie back and the veggie toadstool 
and we can return Zara and then the only thing to do is just to stamp a sentiment. Yes, yeah, Zara does work really well with this. It's as if she's made for it. I mean, I'm very lucky that I have virtually all the variable stamps. I think there's only two sets I don't have. So I can, the trouble is I, trying to remember what you've got when you've got all of it. <laughs> right, so we're going to use the little magic, which is everything is better with a little magic, which I think is very appropriate. And we're going to have that, we're we going to have it there, do we think? Or should we have it down the bottom? Let's have it there. His tail's in the way. I wasn't going to use him. I might trim yeah, I might trim it down a bit, I don't know. Let me have a look. That looks alright. Put my magnet back up there. Hopefully I've not got dirt. Look at my state of my hands. I'm hoping that I don't have any dirty marks. So again we'll just have the pine comb. Brown. Obviously, I'd colour her in, maybe trim it a wee bit. I might trim a bit off the bottom and a bit off the top. And that's it. So, uh, that's me done. So, we've done a couple of scenes and we've done the tag. Obviously, they need colouring in, and when I've coloured them in, I will um, pop it onto the group uh, so you can see them. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, and uh, I think I'm back in a fortnight with another um, live for you in the group. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day and have a lovely bank holiday weekend. Bye for now.